Good evening, superstars. Tonight, I'm going to do a video on the easy way to do pie cuts. Got a bit of a list to run through, so um, hopefully by the end I'll articulate how to easily make pie cut bends for your intercoolers and exhausts, that kind of gear, because it's worked pretty good for me. Um, so the first thing to get into is the aim of this video, I guess. There's a million videos out there. This is a one I prepared earlier. There's a million videos out there, I guess, explaining the proper way to do a pie cut bend, which involves a mathematical equation uh, to determine the exact radius, the start, and the end point that you want to end up with, how tight the bend is, and all that kind of gear. I've found that generally you can eyeball it. You don't really need to get that in depth. Uh, I guess when I was starting out, I was looking at dozens of videos, trying to find an easy way to do it. And I really lost interest. Not that it was that hard. I just didn't really want to do fancy stuff. I just wanted to make up bits of crap for my skin car. I didn't have access to bends, straight tubes, nice and cheap. So that was the way I was doing it. And I guess the other reason is I've learned a shitload off YouTube. So uh, time to give a bit back. Share some love. So you also might be wondering, why would you waste your fucking time making up a pie cut when you can just buy bends like this? I've got a whole box of bends and I find that I still end up making pie cuts all the time. Reason being, you can't put these on convoluted angles, which is especially for cooler piping and low cars trying to get around the subframe, tuck it tight. You know, you just, you can't use these bends properly. Or if you do, you end up cutting off half the bend anyway. So this is say 30 bucks for a bend versus 30 bucks for a whole meter of stainless, which you can probably get two or three of these out of, maybe more. As you might be able to see on this bit here, a perfect 90 would have been useless because I couldn't turn it halfway to get the angle I need, which is why I end up pie cutting this piece in particular. Um, you know, save yourself time. You can definitely just use bends. I just use bends sometimes. Sometimes you just prefer the look of a nice pie cut as well, or a tight radius. That's the other thing. Like, look at the bend on that. If you need to go sharp turn around a rad support or something, you can potentially end up here with a good pie cut bend versus out here. But another critical factor. So the things you need to do these kind of pie cuts. First off the bat, you need a dead straight workbench. Just makes it so much easier for all kinds of work. I've got a bit of wood sitting on top at the moment. Because when I make blast pipes, it's actually a pain in the ass with the steel top bench, it's bowed. So uh, by the time you clock all your pieces together, it's way out of whack. Even just, um, I'll get to it in a minute, but just marking out your piece of stainless pipe on a bowed bench will be inaccurate. Does it really matter? Probably not, but when you try to start clock it all together and nothing lines up, you might as well just take the extra five minutes and do it on something perfectly flat. The other thing you need is a good bandsaw. Uh, if you're doing anything bigger than two inch, don't even waste your time with a chop saw. I started off with a chop saw. As soon as you go over two and a half inch pipe, the blade walks that bad, you end up with like a five degree cut when you're trying to do a zero degree. Just a straight cut. Um, invest in a cheap bandsaw. They started about 400 bucks. I'll show mine in a minute. This is the saw I'm using at the moment. It's a BS6 from Heron Forbes, which is sort of an upper model of a portable saw. They're about a grand, you don't need to spend that much. You can buy 
for example, their BS4 is about 400 bucks and you can get a similar thing at Total Tools for about 400 bucks. They do the job just fine. The reason I've got this one is for when I make blast pipes. It goes up to 67 degrees of cut angle. Which I need to do a I need to do a 45 degree cut in 4 inch pipe to make blast pipes. So this is this is the reason I brought this saw over the old style one I used to use. Chop saws are completely useless for this kind of shit. I mean, I've used one before, but the amount of time you waste cleaning up the burrs it leaves behind, it's just not worth it. Uh, good thing about this saw is, I might have to zoom in on it later. Because it's got a jaw on both sides, I've sort of marked all my cut points for two, two and a half, three inch, four inch pipe into it. So I can slot it straight in there and see where my piece is clocked when I turn it 180, 180, 180, 180 when I'm cutting pie cuts. The other thing is to get yourself a bimetal blade. Don't even waste your money on the carbon blades that they come with because stainless will eat those in about 10 seconds. Get yourself a bimetal blade with as many teeth as possible. 14 or 16 TPI works pretty good on like 3 inch stainless. Um, I chewed up a couple of the standard blades before I brought a bimetal blade, proper one, and I've done at least two, three hundred cuts on one blade before without even dulling it. So if this video is a redraining your life and you just want to know how to do it the full caveman way, just make up a bunch of these, cut it zero degrees, eight degrees. Cut up a whole bunch of those, stick them together, eventually it'll make a 90. But that's not the way I'm going to show you how to do it, which I'll get into now. So we start off with just a plain clean piece of pipe. I like to work in say one metre sections, I cut myself off about a metre at a time to make up a few bends. Now the first thing you're going to notice if you just run off and start cutting shit up and trying to make a pie cut is that you're going to need to cut two angles, we use roughly a 10 degree angle on the same piece of pipe. So one cut here, one cut there, then there'll be another piece, one cut here, one cut there. You need to have some sort of way of aligning them or clocking them in your saw when you're cutting 180, 180 otherwise it, as, as you can imagine shit's going to be fucked so this is sort of the way that I came up with doing it there might be a video out there already kind of detailing this but um, I didn't really see any when I was looking this, this is an idea that I just came up with out of common sense, which has served me pretty well so far. Probably done a dozen exhaust systems with this method. Some I made entirely out of pie cuts, some I use bends as well. Anyway, so you start off with your nice flat workbench, and this is where shit will start going wrong if you haven't got a nice flat surface to work on you start ending up with some wonky cuts. Get yourself an engineer's square. You can use a ruler, you can even just use a tape measure, but an engineer's square does the job properly. Now, what we want to do is mark the pipe every 90 degrees, the whole way around. So the pipe's 360 degrees around the circumference. We want to mark it once every 90 degrees. That way we know where it's sitting in the saw, where it's clocked in the saw, fairly precisely. And if you're out by, say, a mill here, it's going to start adding up pretty quick down the road, you'll find. I like to use Pika pens. They're about 12 bucks on eBay, pretty expensive, but 
really fine tip which makes it a piece of piss to mark things out anyway so I'll make it simple for you two and a half inch pipe engineered two and a half inch is the outer diameter or I should say tube I should say two and a half inch is the outer diameter of the tube that's how tubes measured so if I want to know where halfway around this tube is if I sit it flat on a nice flat workbench inch and a quarter is halfway around it obviously so I've got an inch and a quarter mark on here I just trace that till our pipe's that inch and a quarter then I mark it down the other end that inch and a quarter also now you've got two marks halfway around them you know that they're both in the same place theoretically you could just stick a ruler on it and start drawing but now that we know they're in the exact same place we can do the rest of it pretty accurately And uh, if anyone's got a better way to do this, I'd, I'd love to know, actually. This is the best way I've thought of so far. Anyway, now we mark a straight line right across it. Stay still, fuck you. Yeah. So that's all good and well, but now we need to know how to put it aligned every 90 degrees. Or for the sake of this, you could probably just do it at 180 degrees, not worry about the 90 degree marks. I just find the 90 degree marks help you really line it up when you're trying to assemble your piece. So the way we work that out is with the circumference of the pipe of the pipe tube, I keep saying pipe. So to find out where our marks go, it's just a simple, simple maths. You don't need to do this once and then you know it forever. Two and a half inch diameter is 63.5 millimeters. Times that by pi, 3.14, gives you the circumference, which is 199 mil. Now if you divide that by 4, 49.8, round that off, we'll call it 50 mil. That tells you that you need to mark 50 mil increments around the pipe to do 90 degrees, or 100 mil increment if you want to do 180 degrees. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to articulate it the best that I can. So now if I do a mark at... 50 mil then I grab the other side mark him at 50 mil as well now I've got a line marked out that's exactly or close enough to exactly for our purposes anyway 90 degrees around the tube So once you make up a few of these, you're sort of laughing. Once, once you mark them up, you pretty much just chuck it in the saw and go to town, cut up your angles. Now we've got some marks every, every 50 mil. Every 90 degrees. Hopefully you can see this good enough in the video. But the tube's got, zoom in you fuck, focus. A mark every 90 degrees on the, on the pipe now. So 90, 90, 90. Now we're gonna chuck it in the saw and start cutting some angles. Before we do that, 
I guess we'll start off with a 90. Everything else is pretty easy once you can do a 90. All you need to do to get 90 degrees, the more, basically the more cuts you do, the smoother your bend will be. The minimum you can do without having it look like a piece of shit is four pieces. Or it really ends up being five in total because you've got your two end pieces and then I think you end up with one, two, three in the middle. But four points where the cuts meet. You could double that easily, but it, it would give you a smoother bend, but make it so much more of a pain in the ass to fabricate. Um, so to figure out the degree you need to cut is pretty simple. 90 degrees divided by four is 22.5. Then half of 22.5 is 11.25. You don't really even need the equation to work this out. You could just cut up a bunch of pieces at eight, nine, 10 degree, 15 degree angles and sit them together and see how, see how it comes up for yourself. This is a, a semi-calculated way to do it, which I think is still true to the title of being the lazy way. It's pretty fucking simple, just 11 degrees times eight. Anyway, I'll um, cut it up in the saw and show you what I'm on about. When we put it in the saw and start cutting, we've got to have a way to turn it exactly 180 degrees so that you know that all your cuts are happening on the same axis. And the easiest way I can figure to do that is to, again, take your square same as you did on the bench and put it there at inch and a quarter. Now you know that if you put it there at inch and a quarter on both sides, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, you know that the pipe's sitting perfectly level in the saw. So when you do your first angle cut, then flip it around, you do the same thing. You measure it at inch and a quarter on both sides or as close as you can get. And you know that you're cutting along the same axis. So when you get, when you get, to the end, all your cuts line up. It's simple as that. So we'll start off doing 11.25. Obviously you can't pick 11.25 in your saw, but you know, 11 and a little bit do the job. Get in there. Check it against my two and a quarter mark. Now your end cuts don't matter, but the thing to remember is when you do, your, your end cut is like your runoff of the bend. So if you've got three pieces in the middle, you're gonna have two longer pieces on each end that tie onto what you're already welding, where you're coming from and where you're going to. The middle pieces, if you want it to look not spastic, you're gonna to wanna to measure the length of stick out of the tube in the saw to your vice or something repeatable like that, like usually to your vice. That way you're cutting them all with the same inside distance so that your bend is not symmetrical but the same the whole way around. Doesn't doesn't start off sharp and then mellow out. Unless you want to do that, then of course go for it. But if you want a consistent that's the way I was looking for, consistent. If you want a consistent bend, then measure your stick out coming out of the saw and do them all the same. Like say, I might do say 35 mil out of the jaws. If I do that on, on my cuts with the first cut, which I would call the inside cut. So you got your two angles and then you got the shorter inside, yeah. So if I stick the tube, say 30 mil out of the saw, I might end up with a 20 mil length 
on the on the shorter inside piece. So you're going to have 20 mil, 20 mil, 20 mil, 20 mil all the way around and, and have the same distance overall. Anyway. That's my first runoff piece done. Get that out the way so I don't lose it. I'm gonna run with, I'm gonna do just a, just a normal 90 degrees bend in this one. Nothing, nothing fancy. So I'm gonna run with 30 mil of stick out. So all of my inside pieces are going to have 30 mil. First cut piece, so yeah, like I was saying, I think it's three of those. You go up the center. Flip it around again, because we've marked the pipe out, it's nice and repeatable. 30 mil stick out on the short side. Now you should be able to start seeing your elbow take place. So we're almost there, that took me all of about two minutes. One more cut with a trailing off piece to exit and that's it. To zero degrees to trail off with. Now we should have a whole elbow ready to go. I'm gonna stick these in the belt sander and clean them all up real quick. You don't need a belt sander, you can do this with just a file. These have got rough cuts. You can actually, they usually get pretty fine cuts with a bandsaw. Um, my blade in the moment's too coarse and it started chipping them a bit, which is why I've got rough cuts. You usually don't need to do much cleaning up at all. You can do it with just a file or a deburring tool. But for the sake of 150 bucks, you might as well just get a belt sander, it's so much easier.
So now we've got a whole set to make a 90. And because of the marks we put on previously, the reflection's probably making it hard to see. So everything should line up perfectly now. Kind of impossible to hold it by hand, but you get the idea. Nice, nice tight 90 degree bend. So be careful not to wipe it with anything, especially not brake cleaner or acetone. Like, do that after you tack it before you're gonna weld it. Cutting fluid seems okay, doesn't seem to, or maybe a bit of water, doesn't seem to mark the paint doesn't seem to take the paint marker off but uh, yeah you don't want to erase all your marks otherwise you're back to square one again right so when you tack it don't just tack it because if you've got a nice fine cut here where it's a nice matching surface as soon as you tack it the weld's going to pull the piece in and you're gonna end up with a gap on the other side that you won't be able to fix. So I just get a bit of paper, sandpaper, something like that. Line up your line up all your marks to make sure you're working on the same axis. Then tuck it with a bit of paper in there, just just to make the slightest gap so you've got some room to move it around. That's all you need, just a little bit. Now you rip the bit of paper out and just go around and tack the other side. I find it better to do your tack on the inside or on the side because you'll end up with a little bit of gap on the inside that's all right that's easy to deal with if you end up with a little bit of gap on the outside outside corners are very hard to weld they blow through a lot of the time or you got to turn the amps right down you know turn your heat right down or move faster one of the two And uh, there you go. Ignore those tacks, they're shocking. 90 degree bend, ready to tack up completely. Tack the shit out of it, because it will warp when you try to weld it. And then, uh, yeah, weld it into the rest of your project. So that's it, finished 90. I'm not going to weld it before I use it on something because it'll warp. You basically want to finish your whole section before you weld any of it. Because if you weld just an elbow like this, it'll it'll be an oval by the time you're done with it. Uh, so to recap, you get your straight bit of pipe. You need to mark it at 90 degrees the whole way around it. 90, 90, 90, 90. The reason we do that is so that when you're cutting angles on the same piece, you can stay relative to your other cut. You're gonna cut it once at 11 degrees, then flip the pipe over, cut it at 11 degrees again. And the reason you got the lines is so that you can measure it and stay relative to your last cut. It's that simple. 
you want to make a 90, 11 degrees, 11 degrees, 11 degrees, 11 degrees, 11 degrees and so on. That's it.